Hello, I am your host, Kathy Chester, and welcome to the Move It or Lose It podcast, a podcast about all things that move the mind, body, and soul. The Move It or Lose It podcast is for information, awareness, and inspirational purposes only. I am not a doctor, and I don't even play one on TV. So please consult your doctor before making any medical decisions. The views expressed by advertisers, guests, or contributors are their opinions and not necessarily the views of the Move It or Lose It podcast. Hello, welcome to another edition of Move It or Lose It, our podcast. And today I'm excited to have Summer. And she is a doctor, but we're not going to call her that today. Just Summer. So um, Summer, I've um, had a lot of people letting me know, like I have said to you guys, let me know who you would like to see on the podcast. So this has been someone that I've been really excited to have on. I've been watching her on TikTok and some other things, and um, I'm really excited to have you on, Summer. You've got quite a story, so welcome to Move It or Lose It. Thank you. Nice to be here. Absolutely. You are um, you are a beast as to what you have done and what you've taken on and not quit during all of the stuff. I just um, I'm very excited to introduce you those who don't know you and the stuff that you've really worked through to become who you are now is just I just kept reading it and I was like and then what and I kept telling my husband then she did this and then wait and listen to this and so it was just just phenomenal but um so let's talk a little bit about who summer is so for our listeners who have no idea um you were diagnosed with not multiple sclerosis but you were diagnosed with a disease called nmo now for those who are like what talk to our listeners what is nmo well actually i was initially i was initially misdiagnosed as ms in 2017 yeah, changed it to NMO later and that's common super yeah. common but the very very similar diseases NMO is called neuromyelitis optica and it at one time was considered a super aggressive form of multiple sclerosis it was actually part of the multiple sclerosis bundle sorry about that <laughs> and anyway um you just looked like summer <laughs> it, anyway it tends to cause longer spinal cord lesions and optic nerve lesions first before mm-hmm. brain lesions. Um, and when I say longer, so MS, you know, you know, gets spinal cord lesions as well. Right. NMO is three vertebrae in length or longer, whereas MS tends to be shorter. So yeah. it tends to be one that builds up disability quickly. Um, it's thought to not have a progressive phase, although there's some questions about that, but that's way off in the distance in studies. Right. So. Right. Uh, so you, um, when they thought you had MS, they were, what yes. did they do with you in the beginning? Did they put you on? So initially I was started on Jelenia and okay. then had, and then I had another attack and then they switched me to Tysabri and then I had another attack. So my three attacks were within 18 months. So pretty compressed timeline. Right. They all involved transverse myelitis, which is a pretty severe spinal cord attack. Yeah. And the last one also had optic neuritis with it that I lost a bunch of vision. Yeah. Um, but it, anyway, it was at that last one that they're like, hmm, maybe we have something wrong here. Yeah. And decided to relook at it. And when they relooked at it, they're like, oh, no, we think you have MS. And the problem, or I'm sorry, oh, no, we think you have MS instead of MS. Uh-huh. The problem is, is many of the treatments for MS actually make NMO worse. Right. And Delaney and Tysabri are two of those that tend to do okay. that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's so it's so interesting because I read that and I was like, I was on Tysabri for years and I I loved it and was taken off it. It's it a was great, great medicine for most people. Yeah. It's such right. a great medicine. I would never tell someone, hey, be t- don't take this just because I had a bad experience with it. Right. Obviously. But what's bad for me may be perfect for someone. Right. Else. And then if I understand it, you are also not allowed to take things for like rheumatoid as well, right? Correct. Yeah, because with a lot MS, of things. I have rheumatoid as well. And so two diseases that aren't aren't friends, rheumatoid and MS. Yeah. I'm like these don't go together. So um right. 
I know it's like the rheumatoid medicine that my body would do well on can't because of the MS. So I know when I read that with you, I was like, oh, dang, I understand that. <laughs> so that's yeah. stinky. It's like when we got, you know, those autoimmune diseases and they like to like, I always say I'm picking them up like, you know, like Pokemon cards. It's like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you get one. It's like, OK, uh, now you got this one and that one. So I have Sojourns as well. So, you know, Sojourns is this another autoimmune disease I've picked up right away. You know, and so, also had EDS as a kid. So talk to us about that. So, so a lot of, I have a client that has that, but a lot of people do not know what EDS is. Okay, so EDS is a connective tissue disease that there's most people have the hypermobility form. So uh, that just hypermobile joints, right? Right. Um, and when I say just, it's only in relationship to other EDS hypermobile joints is awful. <laughs> so um, lots of subluxations, dislocations, right. uh, a lot of ortho type stuff. There's a lot of pain with it. Yeah. EDS natural progression, at least as far as the hypermobility part of it, it kind of goes, gets bad, you get a lot of dislocations. And then in your older years, uh -huh. things start becoming more spastic mm -hmm. and at the joints. And so you lose some of the hypermobility, but you have the spasticity and pain from it. So, okay. So are you dealing with a lot of the spasticity right now or are you still in the hyper? Uh, kind of both when it comes to EDS. Okay. I have okay. my shoulders and wrists are still yeah. very hypermobile. But I a lot of my spasticity that I've developed is actually more due to my NMO. Okay. So I get yeah. Botox injections on the bottom on the bottom half of my body and my vocal cords okay. every few months for that. Okay. So. Yeah. I know we talked about the vocal cords and um, you sound good today. So <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that I would always get teased because I, I didn't know that the vocal cord thing came with MS and I didn't understand and nobody really explained back then. And I just thought I always had bumps on my vocal cords. That's what they always told me. And so I was like, all right, I guess that makes sense. And I just didn't really understand what was going on and why my voice was becoming so um, harsh and sometimes just not working. And so um they were like, well, it makes you a great trainer. You're kind of scary. I'm like, well, yeah, but that's not really what I want to sound like. And um, <laughs> so they joke with me. There's like, well, you could do phone sex. And I'm like, again, not something I really want to not do. Like, and, right. Yeah, not my. People want to do that fine, but I don't want right. to. <laughs> like in my goals, that really wasn't one of them. Um, <laughs> so it, it's just a weird thing. All of a sudden your voice, I, I've got like the man voice. I'm like, I, I don't know where this came from. So yeah. it is interesting how, you know, these things affect us in different ways and you never know what's going to happen in your bags of tricks. So um, oh, yeah. it's interesting to see that with you. So yeah. um, talk to us about like your, when you had your first attack, because it was different when okay. you had your first attack. So, you were, yeah. so I was six weeks from finishing internal medicine residency when I had my first attack. Um, I had. I had what is known in residency as a golden weekend. And that means a weekend where you don't actually have to work. You actually have two days in a row off. So, yeah. you know, I was super happy about that. Um, went home, was spending it with my kids, you know, enjoying the weekend. Um, I noticed on, I believe it was Saturday morning, that my left hip felt like I was sitting in a window and the sunlight was shining on it. Okay. You know, where it gets that warm, but yeah. not it just warm, but it wouldn't go away. And it just okay. got worse and worse and worse. And then by Monday morning, I could not move my right leg. My left side felt like it was on fire. Um, but I'm also a resident that had didactics Monday morning. So I got in my car, drove to work, sat through four hours of lectures, and then went to my attending and said, gosh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to hold that. <laughs> right, I'm going to hold it. But anyway, so I went to my attending and I said, hey, Dr. Nickel, what's her name? I, I need to talk to you. And she's like, okay, let's go in the other room. And so I'm dragging my right leg. Because my left leg, oh, I could boy. still move, but my right leg, I couldn't. So I'm dragging it in there. And she looks at me and she goes, so what's wrong? And then she proceeded to do what attendings do to residents, which ask you a ton of questions to make you come up with the answer. Right. And you come up with the next step. So it got to the point that it's like, 
She's like, so what do you think the diagnosis is? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure, but I don't want to say it out loud. Right. And she goes, well, I think it's probably multiple sclerosis. Let's go get the MRIs. So she ordered the MRIs for me and then got me in touch with neuro. They started me on IV steroids. Mm-hmm. Um, Which are the five, oh, <laughs> let me tell you, um, the five days straight, but I, so uh. I would go get my IV steroids and then go around on patients. Yeah. I worked the entire way through my first attack. Um, wow. Did physical therapy. And it took for transverse myelitis. I will say this. It was a mild case of transverse myelitis okay. compared to some people. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I know it, it's very painful. It can be very, very painful and very, very severe. Some people yeah. can't move anything. Right. right? And I was, and this was affecting just my lower extremities. My upper okay. extremities were fine. Okay. So, got so you were in that, a wheelchair for that. Cr- 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 well, okay. I was dragging myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. no, yeah so it wasn't the, it wasn't the smartest or best thing to do right. but we've all done but, that stuff yeah yeah you know, but I was my goal was to finish residency on time right. I had six yeah. weeks left yeah. I already had my contract signed to be an attending hospitalist nice. I was like I I just got to finish these six weeks yeah so that's what I did Good for you. You are like a force to be reckoned with. You were definitely going to finish. You weren't going to let anything stop you. And you Not didn't. So you finished. Yeah. And so I finished. What? And well, my, I was actually doing pretty well. I, that was when I was started on Jelenia. Uh-huh. Um, and I had two months off between when I finished residency and when I started my first attending job. And so I took those two months to do a lot of physical therapy, focused mm-hmm. on, you know, being as healthy as I could for that job. Because it was a hospital's job, which is seven days on, seven days off, 12-hour mm-hmm. days. And I was going to be driving an hour each way for work. You know, so I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I can handle this. So I was doing all the things I needed to do to do that the best I could. And, oh, it would have been Three months into my first, that job, I had my second attack. Um, that one I ended up in the hospital for. Okay. Um, it was, again, another transverse myelitis. Um, it had a little bit higher up level than okay. before. So now it involved, like, my chest down. Oh, okay. Still, my upper extremities were pretty good. Right. But, you know, um, they did, they initially did these steroids. And they did not work. So they did okay. Plex. So that was the first time I had Plex. Um, okay. You know, did Plex. Uh, that actually seemed to work really well. It was okay. super painful the first time because they, the when the IR put the, the line in, uh-huh. they left a wad of gauze between the line and my chest wall. Ooh. And that was painful. Yeah. They had to wait three days till they could change the bandage. Ooh. Once they did, and they popped that gauze out, that pain went away. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I bet. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, did Plex. That was 10 days in the hospital for the Plex treatment oh. to be every other day. Physical therapy on the days off. Um, I don't know if you, have you ever had Plex? No. Okay. And I don't so, want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it made my blood pressure drop really low. It go yeah. super slow. It was pretty miserable. Um, but it worked. That's the yeah. important thing. It worked, yeah. right? I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like none of us want these things. You know, I do sure. chemo because my MS sure. had, or in the early days. I did not want that. I was like, absolutely yeah. not. But it absolutely halted my MS. He, Correct. I Correct. trusted him completely. I loved my neurologist. Right. Haven't found one since then that I like at all, but I loved him, trusted him, hated it, but it worked. And that's the most mm-hmm. important thing, you know? Yep, exactly. And so then that was when I was started on Tay Sabri. Mm-hmm. So, and I actually did fairly well for almost a year because I had okay. those first attacks. My first attack, which was six weeks before I finished residency, would have been in May. Uh, May of 2019, no, 2017, sorry, May of 2017, second one in October. And then I didn't have another one until July of the next year. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, you okay. know, I, that was the whole 
just about a year and a half span, a little right. under, where I went from those three major attacks that got me re-diagnosed as NMO and where right. I'm at now. Okay. So. Wow. Okay. So then, so now talk to us about what changed your life. So obviously you were, you were diagnosed on 39, almost 40, right? Mm-hmm. That's when you were yeah. diagnosed. So like, I want you to really talk about some of your biggest concerns and your fears. I mean, I know mine, but this isn't about me. It's about you today. So <laughs> I've already done my podcast stuff. They know mine. So I want to know about what it was like for you. What were your concerns as, as a, you know, you're, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be you're a mom, you've got these, all this, is. you're like, what? What were yes. the fears going through so, your mind? When I was first diagnosed and diagnosed as MS initially, I was concerned about like, you know, we know the unpredictability of this disease. And I, I was concerned about what that unpredictability would bring. Right. What over time that would do, so would I be able to continue this career that I worked so hard for and absolutely sure. love. I don't necessarily enjoy all the things about the medical, the healthcare system, <laughs> but I, I there's lots we can talk about on that. Right, but, exactly. But, you know, um, but I would really- Maybe the next point. time I have you on, we will talk about that because it is hey. something that- Oh, it's a beast. Passes. It's a beast. But, you know, would I be able to continue that? And then also, would I be able to continue doing the things for my kids that, Right. They want, I want, those are important things for me, you know? And so that was my concern. And then over that first year and a half, I kind of settled into the MS diagnosis. Yeah. And I had really good recovery from those first two attacks for the most part. I did have, I to this day still have burning on the left side of my body. My right side is weak. Um, It, those lingered from the first one and they just kind of sure. built up each time. But I was like, okay, I can, I can get through this, you know? Right. Um, so, but then when they switched my diagnosis to NMO, because I will be honest, NMO is taught as a line in med school, yeah. you know, in right. the, if you do a neurology rotation, you might hear about it a little bit more. Right. I would imagine. But it's not taught much of. Right. So, And at that time, the the time that they switched me from MS to NMO, it was either the month before or right at that same month was the first NMO FDA approved medication there had ever been. Prior to that, there were no FDA approved medications. Um, It's not what I'm on. Um, Prior to that, they used a combination of other other meds and um, rituximab a lot uh, um you know so they but then and now there's like four medications that are proof for uh, NMO um, but they're all for seropositive I'm seronegative which is even a rare more rare subgroup <laughs> wow you know, there's, there's if you do the math there's probably wow. around 400 to a thousand of us in the United States that are seronegative NMO wow so you're just an overachiever just, obviously <laughs> obviously right but so when they switched my diagnosis with that because and and this has changed a lot um but pre good treatment for nmo Uh the prognosis was five years from diagnosis that you would likely no longer be alive yikes and you were diagnosed with ms then i remember you know back in the 90s because i had it now 20 something years and that's yeah. kind of what it was you were told back then with yeah. MS. It was like you had a VHS tape and it was like some older woman's like on this very, very um, slow walk. And it was like a wheelchair in this many years, death in this many years. And it was like, right. great, threw that crap out. And I was like, okay. no. So no. I I get it. It was like these are the worst like outcomes. Like no, thank you. Right now, and I will say with that with the advancements and treatments for NMO, yeah, um, including for zero negative, it's not quite that way anymore. Yeah, there's it, it's highly variable, just like MS is. It tends to be with less recovery between attacks, so the disability that you get 
is typically there. Um, yeah. But it's not necessary. It's no longer in five years. You're not going to be around, you right, know. Right. There's so. I was I was switched to NMO in 2019. That's five years ago now. Right. I, I was diagnosed initially in in 2017. I've already passed that five years, right? right. So I'm no longer scared of that. I was yeah. scared of it initially, but I'm right. not now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm so concerned with what is my biggest concern now. Yeah. Is because so they put me on Ocrevus and uh -huh. my my neuro had to jump through a lot of hoops in order to get me on Ocrevus at the time. It's actually now used quite a bit in NMO. Okay. Um, That's what but, I was going to ask you. Are they using that more and more with NMO? Mm -hmm. they are. Okay. Right. Because it's the humanized version essentially of rituximab yeah. and it has way less infusion reactions. I'm someone that and tends to have a lot to of to hit your B cell, right? It's not, Correct. it's not, not, Correct. you don't need something to hit your T cell. That's why That's, type that's what they're using. those ones are a no, no go. Right. So they, they do the, they they did get me permission to get on the Ocrevus. It took a little bit of time. I was one of the first people in the United States that actual Ocrevus rather than rituximab was used on for NMO. Okay. Um, but I do have infusion reactions every single time. So they go slow and give me a ton of extra pre meds and redose me part way through. Okay. But it, the concern when she was getting me the treatment for the NMO yeah. was. This medication is for zero positive. You won't let her have that because she's zero right. negative. She's rituxan is what's known to be okay for NMO, but she has such bad infusion reactions. We will probably kill her with the infusion. Yeah. So she did get me on to Ocrevus, and I've been on it since. And I have had little tiny things occur, but uh -huh. nothing that required change in medication. And nothing that was really additive. So okay. that last attack I had in 2019 was my last major attack. And Good. it is the one that I have left. I've lived in that area of disability since. Okay. I haven't had any additional stuff. It's just been that. Okay. Very good. Oh. So with that, like no infections with the, uh, with the Ocrevus or anything like that? Oh, I, I get it. I get infections. I get UTIs. I get skin infections. We treat them. Yeah. You know. I know, me too. I'm always like, well, I cut myself. Well, that's going to be like a big right. deal. So every yeah. time I do anything, it's like, okay, well, there we go with that. So, right. but it just comes with it. You just know, like, be as careful as you can. And it's like, oh, I got stung by something. All right, well, let's go get some like major, you know, stuff where I need an antibiotic now. Yeah, let's, so, let's now. You know, yeah. Right. so it's just something, you know, we get used to. And I do that a lot when I, I have a women's support group and I talk about that a lot with our newly diagnosed and they're terrified of Ocrevus and they're like, what is it going to do? And I'm like, I think a lot of us do very well on it. And um, sometimes the switch from Ty Sabre to Ocrevus is difficult. Um, but I think it's a, it's a wonderful um, drug that I'm, men do very well on. And I'm so happy I've gone. It was now officially full five years since being on yes. Ocrevus and no additional major relapses. Like I said, little things, but not enough to change anything. Right. And you know, the fact that there's you not many it. options for me anyway. Right. Like <laughs> the fact that you can take it and, and our primary and our secondary people with MS can take that where there was nothing for them to take. And it's now amazing. they've got it. Ocrevus. It's and amazing. It's like, I'm so happy for so that. so awesome. And there's another one coming. And so it's like, it's just so important that we've got, it was like all we were treating was relapsing or remitting, you know, MS. Right. and it was like, right. the rest of them were just like, well, good luck. You know, it good was luck. like, have fun. And then good why luck. do we, why do we think the depression is number one? I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. So, right. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm going to say, um, we are going to do part two, so okay. I cannot wait. So we're going to go to part two with you. So everybody's going to hear now about how you became a physician and you did not work in the hospital anymore and how you became a primary care physician yeah. and how that changed. So part two. So hold on to part two, my mood or lose it fans, and I will see you and with Summer 
in Jamal. So you all have to look forward to Jamal. I will see you soon. Bye, guys. Hold up. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Move It or Lose It podcast, where you can again find us every Tuesday and also wherever you like your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, join us on that. And we can't wait to see you again. We're going to have a lot of exciting guests and working together. And as always, you'll hear us say at the end of every podcast, we are stronger together. So let's do it. Let's become stronger together. Have a great day.